Welcome to the Cabaret Voltaire at Spiegelgasse 1 in Zurich, the birthplace of Dada. It was here that Dada came into being on the 5th of February 1916. What was and is Dada? No one has ever been able to answer that question conclusively. Dada got its name in Zurich, emerging in the early 1920s as a zeitgeist that spread throughout the world. Major and minor branches were created in places as far afield as Barcelona, Berlin, Cologne, New York, Paris, Latin America, Japan and the Tyrol. Not even the Dadaists know what Dada is. Only the Oberdada does. And he tells no one. Dada is a statement, not a style. Dada took in all the avant-garde movements that existed at the time, like Expressionism, Futurism and Cubism, and discharged them again in either digested or undigested form. Dada was a radical negation of art, and to that extent the first really revolutionary movement in modernism. Jean Arp, the air is a root. The stones are filled with tenderness. Bravo, bravo. The stones are filled with air. The stones are watery branches. On the stones, replacing the mouth, grows the skeleton of a leaf. Bravo. A stone voice face to face and foot to foot with a stone glance. The stones are tormented like flesh. The stones are clouds, for their second nature dances to them on their third nose. Bravo! Bravo! When the stones scratch themselves, nails grow on the roots. Bravo! Bravo! The stones woke to eat the exact hour. In order to understand Dada better, one has to consider the circumstances under which it was born, the world a century ago, the turmoil of the First World War. Hugo Ball, the Cabaret Voltaire's founder, describes those circumstances in the opening sentences of his diary, Flight Out of Time, which appeared in 1927. The world and society in 1913 looked like this. Life is completely confined and shackled. A kind of economic fatalism prevails. Each individual, whether he resists or not, is assigned a specific role and with it his interests and his character. And he goes on to ask, Is there anywhere a force that is strong enough and above all vital enough to put an end to this state of affairs? This economic fatalism was one of the factors that led to the outbreak of the First World War in August 1914. In a devastating war of attrition, lasting four years, a whole generation wasted away in the trenches amidst damp, filth, rats and lice. Hundreds and thousands of people were torn to shreds by grenades and tanks, gassed by phosgene or burned by mustard gas. Neutral Switzerland was described by Hugo Ball as a birdcage surrounded by roaring lions. Switzerland became a haven for intellectuals, scientists, poets and artists from all the belligerent nations. In that haven, as described by Hans Arp, they sang, painted, made collages, composed poetry and danced, searching for an elementary art and a new order that would heal human beings from the folly of the era and create a balance between heaven and hell. The decade leading up to the First World War witnessed a huge paradigm shift in society, philosophy, art, literature, psychoanalysis, science and politics. The philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche declares and laments the death of God. The artist Vasily Kandinsky philosophizes about the spiritual in art. Sigmund Freud and Carl Gustav Jung create psychoanalysis. Albert Einstein develops the theory of relativity and Lenin not far away from the Cabaret Voltaire, works on the concept for the Russian Revolution. Strange incidents. 
When we had the cabaret Voltaire in Zurich at Spiegelgasse 1, there lived at Spiegelgasse 6, opposite us, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Ulyanov Lenin. And when we were opening the gallery in Bahnhofstrasse, the Russians went to Petersburg to launch the revolution. Is Dadaism a sign and gesture the opposite of Bolshevism? It will be interesting to observe what happens here and there. Dada is the world's soul. Dada is the tops. Dada is the world's best lily milk soap. Dada's purpose cannot be summed up in a single sentence. There is, of course, no single coherent Dadaism. But, to some extent, as the basic premise of this fundamentally anarchic movement, as many Dadaisms as there are Dadaists. In Dada's heyday, quite a large number of them were spread all over the globe. Dada did not have a real central organ, but functioned like an open vent for the spirit of the time. The Dadaists directed their protests against a society driven by economic fatalism and rationality, seeing the First World War as a monstrous product of that madness. Driven by a desire to disband hierarchies and overturn established values, they declared reasons and Immanuel Kant to be their arch enemies. With his theory of knowledge, Kant subjected all objects of the visible world to reason and domination. The Dadaists felt that the Enlightenment had disregarded human beings. An important part of the world, its magical side, had been lost in the process. Dada wanted to bring irrationality, fantasy and speculation into people's lives again. It wished to transcend the distinction between art and life. Hugo Ball's first manifesto contains three propositions that spell out Dada's strategy. How does one achieve eternal bliss? By saying Dada. How does one become famous? By saying Dada. With a noble gesture and delicate propriety. Till one goes crazy. Till one loses consciousness. The first proposition, how does one achieve eternal bliss? By saying Dada, was Hugo Ball's vehemently pursued objective. With this key idea, one can draw a line that leads from the archaic dance of Laban's pupils on the Monte Verita, via the artistic intoxication of the Cabaret Voltaire, to the metaphysical spirituality of asceticism. According to Hugo Ball, Dada wanted to reach down into the mystical and mythological sources of human consciousness, cutting through the different strata created by the Enlightenment to plumb the depths of the magical world. The second proposition, how does one become famous? By saying Dada, particularly recalls Tristan Tara, who made Dada international and was its most talented propagandist. He corresponded, telegraphed and communicated all over the world. Dada was a global phenomenon in which anyone could become a president of the movement. After the Dada adventure in Zurich had come to an end, Tsara asserted that a total of 8,950 newspaper articles about Dada had been published worldwide. Dada sought to break down all value systems and all systems of order. Yes equals no and all equals nothing. The third proposition with a noble gesture and delicate propriety, till one goes crazy, till one loses consciousness, is an indication of how one says Dada as a performative utterance. Self-assertion suggests the art of self-metamorphosis. Magic is the last refuge of individual self-assertion. With a noble gesture and delicate propriety, as the world was taught by 19th century dandies. Dada found many different forms of expression. Zurich witnessed the creation of the myth while art was revolutionized by the ready-made in New York. Propaganda made Dada political in Berlin, while in Paris provocation was driven to excess as a stylistic tool. The myth of Dada is created in Zurich. 
every night that are seven founders, Hugo Ball, Amy Hennings, Tristan Zara, Marcel Janko, Richard Hülsenbeck, Hans Arp and Sophie Teuber, go crazy, lose consciousness. In that process of total self-exhaustion, they give birth to Dada. Everyone has been seized by an indefinable intoxication. The little cabaret is about to come apart at the seams and is getting to be a playground for crazy emotions. Dada came over the Dadaists without their knowing it. It was an immaculate conception and thereby its profound meaning was revealed to me. In the hands of the gentlemen in Zurich, Dada grew into a creature which stood head and shoulders above all present. The term Dada was first used in April 1916, a good two months after the Cabaret Voltaire opened. There are many legends and explanations regarding the term. Dada is the best lily milk soap in the world. The secret of a pure white skin and a dazzlingly beautiful complexion lies in the incomparable Dada soap. Elegant ladies and well-groomed gentlemen care about refined toiletries. Dada creates a youthful, rosy appearance and pure skin for daily care and beauty. From Bergman & Co. Obtainable in any perfumery for 50 cents a bar. A mystical climax took place on the 23rd of June 1916 when Hugo Ball, dressed as a magical bishop in a cubist costume, read his verses without words. After having recited his first two sound poems, he wondered how he should end his performance. Then I noticed that my voice had no choice but to take on the ancient cadence of priestly lamentation, that style of liturgical singing that wails in all the Catholic churches of East and West. For a moment it seemed as if there were a pale, bewildered face in my cubist mask, that half-frightened, half-curious face of a ten-year-old boy, trembling and hanging avidly on the priest's words in the requiems and high masses in his home parish. Then the lights went out as I had ordered, and bathed in sweat, I was carried down off the stage like a magical bishop. Three weeks later, on the 14th of July 1916, Hugo Ball presents the first Dada Manifesto in the Haus zur Waag and thereby bids farewell to Dada. Emmy Hennings and Hugo Ball turn their back on Zurich soon afterwards. The following year, in the Gallery Dada on Zurich's elegant Paradeplatz, Dada becomes respectable. The best acts from the Cabaret Voltaire are performed again. The last Dada soiree in Zurich is held in the Saal zur Kaufleuten on the 9th of April 1919. The event creates a riotous scene among the 1500 people reported to have been in the auditorium. Ambula, take piti, soluncola, tabla, tocta, tocta, tacabla, taca, tac, tabubu, balam, tac, tu, i, wow, biba, bimbel. Oh, 
In New York, the Dadaists discover the power of the ready-made. They make machine drawings the new subject of painting and elevate self-representation to an art form. They themselves become art. Everything begins with the first international exhibition of modern art, the Armory Show, in February 1913. The young Frenchman, Marcel Duchamp, bonjour, shows his painting nude descending a staircase there. Painting, which has already liberated itself, is put into threatening motion by the Cubo-Futurist movement. New York has never seen anything like it. Duchamp's nude provokes a succès de scandale, heralding the arrival of the European avant-garde in New York. Francis Picabia, who is also represented in the Armory Show, travels from Paris for the opening and is so impressed by New York and all its industrial and technical wonders that he exclaims joyfully, This is the future of art. For him, machines are human beings, true essence and soul. In January 1916, shortly before the Cabaret Voltaire opens in Zurich, he exhibits his first machine drawings in New York. At the first exhibition of the Society of Independent Artists in April 1917, Duchamp shows an object that becomes the 20th century's most influential work of art. An inverted urinal, entitled Fountain or Buddha of the Bathroom, that he declares to be a ready-made. This provocation is too much, even for an exhibition of independent artists, and the ready-made is excluded. Duchamp has won. What, what a be, what a be, what a beauty. What a be, what a be, what a A. What a beauty, beauty be. What a beauty, beauty be. What a beauty, beauty, beauty be, be, be. What a be, what a be, what a beauty. What a be, what a be, what a A. What a be, 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 be. What a be, 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 be. What a be, 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 be. A beauty, be, be, be. What a beauty! With the colossus Arthur Craven, a boxer and poet as well as a nephew of Oscar Wilde, the Dadaists find a powerful incarnation in New York. His address at the exhibition of the Society of Independent Artists, which culminates in his doing a striptease, causes pandemonium. Another representative of the Dada scene in New York, which is liberated in more than just sexual respect, is the eccentric dancer and Dada baroness from Germany, Elsa von Freitag Loringhofen. She ekes out a living in New York as a poetess, nude model, muse and enfant terrible. And she sums up Dadaist self-assertion and self-representation in the single sentence I am art. Elsa dresses up as a man and has an immortal passion for Duchamp. Marcel, Marcel, I love you like hell. For his part, Duchamp dresses up as a woman, loves himself and turns his alter ego, Rose C'est la Vie, Eros C'est la Vie, into art. Let me drink your lips, let me swallow your breath, let me taste the perspiration of your wind-tangled skin, your black hair cascades. In love throws, your face lightning thunder, a drunken flower. In Berlin, Dada becomes a propaganda machine. The Dadaism of the Kurfürstendamm possesses its own aggressive dynamic. The activists around George Gross, John Hartfield, Johannes Bader, Raoul Hausmann and Hannah Hüch take over the word Dada and use it in texts, photomontage, collages and actions to express their harsh criticism of the Weimar Republic. Dada Berlin had quite a different quality from Dada in Zurich and New York. The circumstances and the place were fundamentally different. In Berlin, there was a true revolution in which Dadaists decided to intervene. There were shots in the streets and on the rooftops. Not just art, but all ideas and feelings, politics and society had to be drawn into Dada's sphere of influence. With his first Dada address in Germany, Richard Hösenbeck takes Dada from Zurich to Berlin in February 1918. Raoul Hausmann describes the beginning of Dada in the following words. 
So forge ahead, Dada. En avant, Dada. Let us accept the risks of a free, independent gesture. Let us disregard the stupidity of good taste. We have to think about the death of God and make it known. Action! Action! The time of poetry on blackened paper that individual vanity is over. One evening in the summer of 1918, in the Café des Westens, Coach Witters introduces himself to the Dada sofer Raoul Hausmann. Schwitters wants to join the Dada Club, but the Central Council, headed by Hösenbeck, turns down his application on the grounds that the club does not accept just anybody. Schwitters' predilection for the simple and the naive was too suspect for the Berlin Dadaist's explosive mindset. So Schwitters traveled home to Hanover and launched his one-man movement Merz, making it quite clear that Merz and Dada are related through their divergences. Two years later, in the summer of 1920, Dada reaches its climax in Berlin with the first international Dada fair. Take a newspaper. Take some scissors. Choose from this paper an article the length you want to make your poem. Cut out the article. Next, carefully cut out each of the words that make up this article and put them all in a bag. Shake gently. Next, take out each cutting one after the other. Copy conscientiously in the order in which they left the bag. The poem will resemble you. And there you are, an infinitely original author of charming sensibility, even though unappreciated by the vulgar herd. In Paris, Dada served as a tool of limitless provocation, extending to its cannibalism of itself. Bon, bon, dit le bonbon de la bouche d'enfant qui était pour lui le bonbon. Le silence de la petite chambre était un cri pour le grand silence. Le silence me dit son manque de confiance. Bon, bon, dit mon silence et s'échappa de confiance. Bon, bon, dit mon silence et s'échappa pour toujours. Tout cela revint sur le bout de ma langue avec un peu de charbon. L'accordéon se mit sur la table. Bon, bon, dit je. Fable. On the 17th of January 1920, Tristan Tsara arrives in Paris. Together with Francis Picabia, he meets André Breton, Louis Aragon, and Philippe Soupeau in order to get Dada established in Paris. Between then and May 1920, numerous Dada soirées take place at which thousands of people, reveling in the scandal, wait to throw rotten tomatoes and eggs. Dada passes its peak. The press and the Dadaists begin to herald its end. As early as the 27th of May 1920, La Liberté announces Dada is dying, Dada is dead. In order to escape Dada's supposed end, the Dadaists announce the Saison Dada in 1921. Even the attempt to revive Dada through a mock trial against the author Maurice Barret fails. Dada is no longer present on stage. Dada could be criminal, cowardly, destructive or a thief, but not a legal arbiter, states Georges Ribemont de Sagne, who acts as the public prosecutor. The internal disputes among the Dadaists escalated at the Soirée du Coeur à Barbe on the 6th of July 1923. A fight starts, during which the poor poet Pierre de Masso has his arm broken by Breton who hits him with a walking stick. That marked the end of Dada in Paris, and at the same time, the hour of surrealism's birth. The world is full of goods trains. The passengers are cows, and milk, and butter, and cheese, and lovely marmalade, and bulls, and horses, and cocks, and hens. The cow is mother to the milk, and grandma both to cheese and butter. The cheese is cousin to the marmalade. The horse is cousin to the cock. The hen lays eggs. The egg is cousin to the cheese and butter. The son and daughter of the milk. Isn't it strange? It is. Surrealism 
which was declared in 1924 in a first manifesto, was a direct reaction to Dada. And there have since been many movements that have seen themselves as Dada's heirs. Immediately after the Second World War, the letterists under Isidore Izu developed their own subculture in Paris, which was dedicated to unconditional social protest. There was the father we hated, surrealism, and there was the father we loved, Dada. We were the children of both, says Michel Bernstein, a letterist from the outset. The artists, known as letterists, and later those known as situationists, most of whom worked in Paris, saw themselves as being the avant-garde of the avant-garde, or the anti-avant-garde. They wanted to surpass the impact of Dada and, through their intellectual and aesthetic radicalism, they influenced the youth and student movement right up until May 1968. In parallel to events in Saint-Germain-des-Prés, an underground culture developed in the USA, which also discovered Dada for itself. Members of the Beat generation, like William Burroughs, reinterpreted the visual design of Dada's poetry in his cut-ups. The Fluxus movement was also influenced by Dada. Neo-Dada in Music, Theatre, Poetry, Art is the title of a pioneering manifesto published by George McEunas in 1962. Fluxus capitalized on Dada's achievements. At legendary happenings, adherents of Fluxus mocked Western art seriousness through symbolic violence, blasphemy and contempt. Marcel Duchamp, Hans Richter and the other surviving original Dadaists took little pleasure in the neo-Dadaist attitudes that developed after the Second World War. They had always tended to see Dada as the last word on the subject of anti-art. <laughs>